Hey, we're taking the Volt out again today. We're going to take it right to the top of a mountain and back and see what type of battery range we can get. Let's get going. Today we're going to um, go on a trip up the top of Mount Seymour. But I have to make a pit stop first because my level 2 charger, my original level 2 charger, not the one that I modified, that was charging the other car, my original level 2 charger decided to blow a fuse. So I got to go down to RP Electronics and pick up a fuse. And I figured this would be a good chance to to uh, show off the navigation on the car, which is um, all based on GPS from my phone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug my phone in just into the USB port. And that is going to launch Android Auto. And uh, that's going to bring it up on my screen here. Go over to Android Auto. Uh, where are we here? Home. Android Auto. I can, I can now just toss the phone into the console here. I don't need to look at it again. Get it out of the way so I don't get any tickets. If I want navigation, we'll just ignore Head it. Head southwest, then turn right. Yeah, shut up. Okay, I need to go to RP Electronics to pick up the parts. So I'm just going to search it out. Okay, Google, give me directions to RP Electronics. Showing results for to RP Electronics. And I'll just select. It tells me the direction I'm going to go. I'm here in Tawasin at the mall. So I'm just going to tap on the screen. And then I'm going to follow directions. Now I can have music playing uh, either from my phone or through my media player in the car through my SD card. Oh, there comes another bolt. It's going to go into the parking Head stall. Head southwest, then turn right. It's going to go into the parking stall that I just vacated. And there's another volt that was parked. Take the next, next right. There's another volt that was parked right next to me that um, is always there, I'm sure. It's a white volt. It's always in that parking lot. And I'm sure that uh, the person that's there is uh, someone. In 300 meters, turn left toward Blue Heron Drive. I'm sure it's someone who works in the mall because every time I come there, there's been a white volt that's always been parked in that same stall every single day. And if I go back there, on my way back, if I go back, I guarantee that that car will still be there. It's there every single day. So I get a feeling that somebody who's working down here at the mall is bringing their volt and charging it up at the public charging station, which is one of the things that ticks me off about charging stations is people that do that. That uh, Take the next left toward Blue Heron Drive, then turn left onto Blue Heron Drive. You know, because... Um, when you get the employees parking their own personal vehicles in the uh, in the parking stalls that are there for customers, then customers can't charge up while they're uh, patronizing the businesses there. Take the next left onto Blue Heron Drive, then turn left onto Salish Sea Drive. But one turn left onto Salish Sea Drive. Is she ever going to shut up? Uh, something that ticks me off more than than employees uh, using the charging infrastructure that's there for customers. And see, this has been dealt with at some of the other malls. At Ironwood Mall, for example, in Richmond, you get one hour, and then they charge you two dollars an hour after that. So that's in 600 meters. Turn left onto British Columbia 17. So that's to uh, that's to stop people from doing that camping on the chargers and to stop employees from utilizing the chargers for their own benefit while they're charging at work. I think that more more public charging stations need to do that. If you know, it, it, give you give two hours, right? Turn if, left onto British Columbia 17. Give two hours of, of uh, charge time, and after two hours, you have to move your car, or you get charged for it. Tesla's already done that with their charging stations now. 
when you have a, if you have a Tesla and you go to one of the Tesla charging stations, you get an email or a notification on your phone that your car is charged and you have you have like 15 minutes to move it, or they start to charge you extra, which I think is a good thing because uh, I got a, a friend that's got a Tesla. Continue on British Columbia 17 for four kilometers. This gets annoying because she just talks all the time. Um, <clears throat> I got a friend that's got a Tesla that went on a road trip and I actually went on a road trip at the same time and we were keeping in touch while we were on our road trip because we were headed to the same place Las Vegas and he had to go down I-5 and I had to I went down the back roads I went down through Chinopa and through Death Valley and stuff because I could do it I'm driving a car that can burn gas so I didn't have to worry about charging up at all just put gas in it when I needed it um anyway uh His biggest complaint was every time he went to a charging station to get a charge, that the available chargers in California were full. Every time he pulled into one, the charging stations were full, and there was a lineup to charge. And that was his biggest complaint. And it was because locals, at the time, Tesla was giving everybody that bought a Tesla free charging for life. And what was happening was people were, instead of charging their car at home where they should be charging it, where they're paying for the electricity that they are using, they were going to the charging station at the Starbucks or at, you know, at the mall. And they were charging up there because uh, they could charge for free. And this creates a problem for someone who's traveling who needs to charge. Speaking of Teslas, my other camera wasn't recording, I thought it was, so you got it off the little one. There's one there. One of the things that ticks me off though with Tesla drivers is that, uh, see regular electric car drivers can't use a Tesla supercharger. They have their own unique connector that only works with Tesla, but Tesla owners get an adapter which allows them to use any other type of charger. And even though at the mall there where I just was, quite often, as I say, that white bolt's always there, but quite often there's a Tesla parked next to it. And that one really burns my butt that someone's gonna sit there and plug their Tesla into a level two charger when uh, about, uh, I don't know, a couple hundred meters away, a couple hundred yards for those that think in that in yards. There's a, a Tesla supercharger with, I think, I think there's 12. But I see Teslas on the level two charger because the the drivers of them are too lazy to walk. They don't want to go in the other mall entrance. They're down where the restaurants are and they don't want to park uh, over where the, uh, over closer to the, you know, some of the stores where the Tesla charging station is. So I'll see the regular level two chargers being used by Tesla drivers. That one kind of ticks me off because they've got their own dedicated charger that we can't use and that they sit and use our chargers. But that's, that's the way it is, right? Anyway, we're gonna follow the navigation here and go the way it tells me to go, which is gonna be the shortest way. <clears throat> I'm gonna go to RP and pick up a couple of spare fuses for my charger. And then we're gonna continue through North Vancouver and I'm gonna go all the way up to the top of Mount Seymour, which I should be able to easily make on the, the range of the battery. I've got 85 kilometers remaining right now. And uh, I should be able to make it all the way to the In park. 600 meters, take the British Columbia 17A North Ramp to Ladner. It's gonna talk again, you know, it just can't do anything about that. It's also relatively loud much louder than the stereo would be playing if I had music playing. So I'll just let her talk. She's gonna say, Take the British Columbia 17A North Ramp. Okay, can I continue or am I gonna get interrupted again? She's probably gonna speak again and tell me that I got a right turn at 5.6 kilometers. What the hell's 
this guy doing? Like, there's nothing on the road. Everyone's swerving. There's nothing on the road there. on my navigation screen here I can go to my phone I can uh, go home I can go to uh, uh, what's this one this is for music so I select that one I can actually select music from now this is would be music playing from the phone itself right which I'm not I I don't have a lot of music on the phone I never stream but if I wanted to stream from my phone I would just tap the headphones button and then that would allow me to stream music from my phone. I'll go back to navigation here because that's normally what I keep it on is when I'm using navigation I keep it on the screen and then I get my turn by turn directions projected onto my, my screen and I can still play music from my in-car system and I can still like change tracks and stuff because I can do that from the steering wheel controls. So for example if I want to see what track is playing I can actually bring it up on my screen here and change or reconfigure the screen by pressing the left button on the steering column and then the down arrow to select music and then the OK button and now it tells me what track is playing and right now what is muted is uh, Mike Oldfield. If I, if I click the um, forward or backwards keys on the steering column here I can change tracks and now I can start another track here and then I can control the volume by buttons on the on the right side here I got my flappy paddle on the left to control my regenerative on-demand braking. On the right, I've got controls for volume, so I can turn the volume up and down. And I can change tracks by hitting the buttons on the left side. And it'll show me, like right now, I'm gonna turn this down just because I don't wanna pull a copyright strike, but right now it's telling me that what's playing is Daydream by David Bowie. It comes up on the instrument cluster here on the screen. Normally it would show up on the main screen, but if, I'm, if I've got my phone plugged in, it's going to show me the maps on the screen, and it's going to show me the song title on the main screen of the car. Even though my car does have wireless charging, if I drop my phone onto the charging pad here, it'll charge my phone up, but it doesn't show me the maps. And I could use my I could just use my phone for um, navigation and have it talking through the system without plugging it in. But I wouldn't get the maps display. I'd have to then, however, as I discovered in the previous video when I took it up to Squamish, I would have to listen to music from the phone. I couldn't listen to music stored on my 128 gig memory card, which is down there in the dash. In 800 meters, use the right lane to take the British Columbia 99 North ramp to Richmond, Vancouver. So just a personal preference, if I'm going to use navigation, I use the navigation uh, on the phone, projected through here. Use the right lane to take the British Columbia 99 North ramp. Now what I don't know is whether I can use offline maps. I'm going to have to investigate that because there are there are offline GPS programs that you can use offline without having a, a, a 4G connection. And going up country where there is no um, you know where there's no access to cellular networks, that would probably be the preferred option. But what I'm not what I'm not aware of right now because I haven't gone into those areas is whether the Android Auto will pull information from the offline map program. I do have an offline map app on my phone but uh, as I say I don't know at this point I don't know whether it, it will make use of that or whether it has to be through the connected app, which is Android Auto. 
you know, it's it's 12 o'clock noon, and this bloody tunnel is backed up still. Doesn't matter when you go through this place, it's always backed up. And, and I can normally go in the uh, in the HOV lane because electric car drivers can go in the HOV lane, but I haven't received my sticker. I've, I've applied for my HOV sticker, but because of the overwhelming demand for HOV stickers, the uh, government is running a few weeks behind. And I think the message I saw was that there was a, a six week wait to get access to the HOV lane. So I was driving the other car, I would be through the tunnel already because I would have just taken the HOV lane right to the front of the line and I would have been through. But I gotta wait my turn on this one to get that uh, coveted sticker that I can stick on the bumper and then I can uh, then I can go in the other lane and bypass everybody else. And even though technically I'm legal to do it because I've got an electric car, without that sticker, you get some dick of a cop and he'd give you a ticket. Okay, I picked up my parts now. Watch what the GPS does here. This is ridiculous. It's going to have me turn here. Uh, no, it's not. It's going to have... I should be turning through there, but it, no. Turn it right onto Gilmore Avenue, there. Myrtle Street, then turn left onto Gilmore Avenue. So it's going to turn me to the right. Take the next left onto Gilmore Avenue. And it's going to turn me left again. It was kind um, of a dumb place to have me turn now, wasn't it? <laughs> with the GPS. I'm going onto the freeway here because... Uh, In 500 meters, take the Trans-Canada Highway, British Columbia, 1 West Ramp to Angleton Avenue. Because we're going over to the North Shore to start climbing the mountain, and that's what this, more of this video is about. So let's uh, get up there. But before I do, watch what some bonehead does coming up here. Uh, this is how accidents happen, because some people just don't have a clue of what merge means. So just bear with me, it's when I'm gonna merge onto the freeway. The guy was come up beside me and he floored it. So the Take I the Trans Canada Highway ramp, then merge onto Trans Canada Highway. So it's coming just up here. And I'm running out of lane trying to merge and the jerk beside me or jerk behind me floored it so that I couldn't cut in. And this is how accidents happen. So we're gonna show this jerk coming up on my left here, okay? I'm speeding up to merge in and this son of a bitch floored it. See, you know, that guy in front of me is a dickhead because he can see that I was running out of room and I had a merge and rather than let me in, the son of a bitch sped up. It's people like this that cause accidents. I tell you, I hope a cop sees this and sees this son of a bitch's license plate and gives him either a ticket or a good warning. It's people like that, just, you know. I had lots of room, and I go to move over, and all of a sudden he's floored it, then he has to jump on the brakes because he's going to hit the car in front of him. Son of a bitch. People like that just drive me crazy on the road. And then there's big trucks that have quite a long stopping distance, yet they ride the vehicle ahead of them right on their ass. And we wonder why our insurance rates are so high and why there's so many accidents because that is not defensive driving. Okay, we're starting to go up Mount Seymour now. Just entered Mount Seymour Parkway. I have 45 kilometers of range remaining on the battery. So I've used approximately half of the battery. Let's bring up the, I'll just unplug Android Auto here, and we'll bring up my battery gauge. I've gone 47 kilometers so far with 44 remaining as we start the climb of the hill. So I'm gonna keep it at the speed limit all the way up so I don't burn up excessive battery. And then when we get to the top, I'm going to turn around and uh, come down and we'll, we'll look at what range, if any, is remaining, which there should be some, because we've used half the battery to get here. And uh, we've used 7.7 .7 kilowatt hours of battery power to get to this point. And uh, when we get to the top, 
we'll see what range remain, how much remains of any, and then we'll see how much we uh, generate coming back down. And we'll keep it, you know, between 60 and 70 kilometers an hour. When I come back down the hill, I'm going to put the car into low range and just set my cruise control, and uh, we'll just continue all the way down the hill uh, using cruise control. And that will keep the regenerative uh, braking going. It'll keep my speed under control and I won't have to use the brakes whatsoever. Range has now dropped to 37. And we've used 8.3 kilowatt hours from the 15 available on the battery. Down to 29 kilometers of range, used 9.1 kilowatt hours. As I say, climbing hills chews up the battery a lot faster than uh, going straight. And this is all uphill, all the way up to the top. My other car would have used up the entire battery at this point. Range has now dropped to 16 kilometers. I've used 11 kilowatt hours of battery. We're really burning through the battery now because this is the steepest part of the hill. salt shed. We're almost at the top. CBC transmitter should be right around here. And all the radio, all the FM radio stations are up here. We're now at uh, 864 meters. The CBC transmitter is right there on the left. Gates are open to it. And uh, we'll make it to the top, no problem. I got seven kilometers of range, and there's only about two kilometers till we get to the top of the hill. We've used 12.8 kilowatts of battery power.
yeah, 6 km of range now and I'm keeping my speed at uh, about 65 kilometers an hour, 60 kilometer range, or 60 kilometer speed up here. So I'm sticking just over the speed limit slightly. This is the last, uh, this is the last curve and then we'll be at the top. We're down to 5 km of range, but we're within a kilometer of the top. the parking lot, the reserve parking lot, We're getting into the fog. We're almost at the top here. One last corner to go around. Right direct ahead of us is all the transmitting towers for all the FM radio stations in the lower mainland. Four kilometers of range remaining. We've used 13.5 kilowatt hours to drive 59.8 kilometers. And uh, here we are. Here's the parking lot at the top of the hill. We made it all the way up on a charge with three kilometers of range remaining. Now we'll head down the hill and see how much power we can recover going back down. Here we are, we're in the parking lot. Over to the right here would be, I think that's the, I think that's the repeater for uh, our V7 RPT is over here somewhere. They're up on Mount Seymour with all the ham radio repeaters and stuff are up here as well. So, we have two kilometers of range remaining on the battery. And we're gonna start the cameras up again and start heading back. Well, here we go. We're going to start down the hill. My, I made it all the way to the top. Used 13.8 kilowatt hours, 60.6 kilometers all the way from my house to uh, to uh, the top of Mount Seymour. Let's go. I'm going to set the speed control for 60 clicks and put the car into low range and let the uh, let the regenerative braking take us back. So the speed control is now set at 65 kilometers per hour. Take my foot off the gas and this will now, we'll start to watch this 13.8 is going to go down as we're regenerating power and the the, uh, the kilometer EV range which started at 2 is going to start going up as we go down the hill. So 60, 61.3 This will start to go down, or 13.7, sorry. That's, the miles are going up, but the, the watt hours is going to go down, 13.7. 13.6. See, I'll use the flappy paddle to bring my speed down to take some of the really sharp turns. So we're generating uh, 18 kilowatt hours, 19 kilowatt hours going back into the battery as we go down the hill. EV range has gone to three. Last time I did this in the other car, it was up to like 30, I think it was 35 by the time I got to the bottom.
about four kilometers of battery range. Generating 17 kilowatt hours now. Five kilometers of range. We picked up a couple so far. I don't know. I think my other car was uh, recovering range faster. We still have a ways to go. Down to 6 km range now. We started at between 1 and 2. As I'll see when I get to the bottom of the hill um, and then drive home, I actually got just as far. I got to just before the tunnel, before it had to switch to gas. So uh, the other one I started with uh, 3 kilometers at the top of the hill this one I started with two at the top of the hill but the other one I had to burn gas to get up the hill this one I didn't but so coming down the hill I started with about the same range and uh, the electric range lasted about the same on the rest of the drive home taking the same route that I took the last time so recovery wise the recovered power was about the same for both cars either on the left side that minus 14 that's uh, 14 kilowatts going back into the battery because that gauge goes to the positive side if I'm accelerating and it goes to the negative side if I'm using regenerator braking if I were to pull the flappy paddle on now to slow right down that would go to about minus 58 as full regenerative uh, braking right now the cruise control is just holding me at this speed and I'm generating right now nine kilowatts of power is going back into the battery and depending on how steep the hill is if the, when the hill gets a little steeper it will actually increase of uh, recovered range and the consumption's gone down to 12.5 I think it was 60 kilometers when we were at the top of the hill so we've come back down it's 8 kilometers coming down and 8 kilometers coming down we've recovered 8 kilometers of battery range Now we're now sitting at 10. So I'm just going to leave the camera running as I continue down the hill here. Once I get down to the bottom of the parkway, I'm going to shut it off and we'll bring it up again when I'm nearing the end of the battery. But this is also the steeper part of the hill right now, so we're recovering 20 kilowatts. That's what the regenerative braking is putting, applying now is 20 kilowatts of regenerative power. We're at 11 kilometers of, of gained range. We're down to 12.2 total used, but that's 
we're putting energy back into the battery. But yet on a hint, the total range I got on this drive on battery power alone before the engine start, 103 kilometers. That is a record for me. And that's going up and down a huge hill. 103 kilometers on one charge. That is a record for me. I've been averaging around 90. The average every, average truck drive I've been doing, I've been getting 90, 92. Today I got 103. Covered 14 kilometers of range. Now, in theory, we should be able to put back the, just as much power into the battery as was consumed going up the hill minus any heat that was lost, right? But uh, in theory, we're at 16 kilometers of range now, remaining. kilometers range remaining. Now at 20 kilometers range. down at the bottom of the hill. So we recovered 21 kilometers of energy because it started at two and we're now at we're now at two, actually 24. So I think the last time I, I ran it right down to the bottom of the hill here before I, I stopped and uh, that was my official stop. But it did, I think I did a little more on the other car coming down, although I, I started with three and I think it was like 35 when it got back down. But we got 24 kilometers of range that I've recovered coming down the hill there. But there's still some downhill to go before I get to the bridge. So we'll see uh, what, uh, how far it goes before it goes to gas, if it does. Because I have a feeling I'm gonna get a lot more than 24 kilometers. Right now I've done 73 uh, total driving. According to this, there's 24 remaining. So we'll see what the uh, the total is. Say so when I started out, it started out, I think it said 90 or 88 when I started the trip. I have to go back and look at the video, but I think it said I had 88. That was what my original one started out, 76. 
mean, 76 and 24 remaining, or 73 and 24 remaining is uh, you know, close to 100. We'll see if we get uh, 97 kilometers on the uh, the electric, on the battery. That's showing almost 100% recovery of power coming down. What I used going up the hill, I generated coming back down. The total here will tell at the end when it does transition to battery. We'll see what our range is like when I get back. But for now, I'm going to shut the cameras off because uh, I don't think I need to leave them running at this point. And uh, we'll pick this up when I get a little closer to home. We're now at uh, Kerr Street and uh, Southwest Marine Drive. South Vancouver, I have covered a total of 91.9, or 92 kilometers now, 92 kilometers I've covered, and the uh, battery range remaining is still 10. So this is going to be a record for me, because uh, the, the furthest I've gotten to this point is 93 kilometers on a full charge, and I'm now knocking on the door for 93 kilometers and there's 10 remaining so this is the the best range i've gotten so far on the 2019 chevy volt the best plug-in hybrid that uh, has ever been produced there's no arguing that because the prius prime and the mitsubishi and the uh, And the Audi e-tron they only go 25 miles or 40 kilometers on the battery even the, the BMW i3 which is a tiny little plastic car carbon fiber and plastic it only has a range I think they say 80 80 kilometers on it and then its gas engine comes on and it's or is it 80 miles anyway it's 80 something uh, but it, it only has a little two-banger uh, 600cc uh, motorcycle-type engine, which does not generate much in the way of power as far as the range extender goes. On uh, one of those cars, the uh, range extender is basically just to get you home. It's not to take you on a trip. You're not driving one of those across the country because the gas tank on the range extender is only two gallons. So you can't go very far. You can go, I think, 80 miles is all it goes between uh, Phillips on that. But with a 600cc engine, you're not going to be cruising down the expressway at highway speeds in a car like that when it's transitioned over to gas. And that's probably why there's so many of them on the used market. I was just looking in the paper and one of the dealers, one of the Chevy dealers of all things, they have about five of them, all ranging like 2015 so these car these were cars that were uh, you know they were over 50 grand when they were new and there's they were they're selling them for like twenty eight thousand um, dollars used and they were like 2015 models so they're three years old and they've lost half of their value I saw a, a, a volt a 2014 volt was uh, going for like twenty four thousand at a dealer the volts have actually held their their value quite well it, it's too bad that GM has stopped making the volt but all is not lost because I keep hearing that uh, there's a, a new vehicle coming for 2021 which is going to be using the powertrain from the volt and it's going to be a larger vehicle like an SUV or a crossover and I've, I've heard that from multiple sources I heard rumors a couple, you know, I heard rumors last year about it, that that was going to happen. And uh, on some of the websites, they've said GM has shot them down on that, saying that there's not going to be one. But uh, the dealers that sell them all say that there is three different dealerships that I went to all said the same thing, that for 2021, there's going to be a hybrid version of uh, either a crossover or uh, an SUV that's yet to be uh, yet to be released and that we will know next year it'll be for the 2021 market so it'll, it'll probably hit the uh the dealers in 2020 sometime that will be interesting that would definitely be something that 
would pique my interest when it comes time to buy another car, which shouldn't be for a long time. Oh, I got one of those ugly, this is, oh, I got, I got one of those ugly Prius Primes in front of me, and I got one of those even uglier BMW i3s behind me. Like, why do they have to make their hybrid vehicles look so awful? It's going to be one of the ugliest cars on the road. Actually, the only thing I like about the Prius is that it's got a windshield wiper on the back window. That's the one thing I wish that uh, they put on the Volt was a wiper for the back window. Because when it gets raining, it's got such a steep uh, slope. When it gets raining, the rain just sits there and it makes visibility uh, tough out the back window. And the Prius has got a window in the, in the hatch area there. You can, I can see through the car like the old Volt. Whereas this one doesn't. So this one's got little less visibility out the back than the first generation Volt, but it does have a nice good camera back there for seeing behind you, an HD camera. So the uh, the view behind the car is actually very good on this one when using the camera. Anyway, just on the Night Street Bridge, still got eight kilometers of range remaining, and I've done 96. So we're going to do well over 100 kilometers on this charge. That's pretty good considering it's only rated at 80. And we're going to do over 100 today, as you can see. We're at 95.7. Got seven remaining. Oh, just clicked six. Okay, done 99 kilometers now. Just coming up on 99. Here we go, 99.0. It says there's uh, three remaining. There goes that ugly, ugh, BMW. Ah, those are, those i3s are just strange looking cars. I'll leave the camera running until, uh, the battery goes flat and we switch over to gas in about two clicks. We've used 14.2 kilowatt hours of battery power to this point. One kilometer remaining, 100.9. There we go, 101 kilometers. One kilometer remaining. Yeah, we're going to get 102 this time. We should get 102. Not bad considering that when I started out it said I only had 80. I think it said 85, but it's rated at 80. EV range is now down, so it's 100 or zero. And it has not switched over yet, but it's sitting at zero. The dash will light up here momentarily when it goes to gas, because the colors are gonna change on here. up on the fuel side still in the green 102 kilometers now zero EV range remaining and we're getting into this slowdown here so we might stretch this a little bit further because when uh, not going very fast it's not going to use much power so we may get another kilometer or two out of here before it actually starts the engine up Here's the backup. I should be in that lane over there. It's just that I don't have my decal. But to recap you guys, 103 kilometers now. Actually, probably a good point to place to, to cut. 103 kilometers and uh, we're in the tunnel traffic now 
but uh, zero kilometers remaining on the battery but it has not switched over to gas yet <laughs> okay watch to the left of the arrow there you'll see it light up as it switches over to gas right about now Okay, it now just lit up the, um, it now just lit up on the gas side. So we haven't burned any gas yet, but it is now ready, it's primed. The engine's gonna start. The EV range light has gone from green has gone out and it's gone blue on the fuel range side and the fuel is lit up in blue. Engine is not running, uh, no fuel used. We've done 0.2 kilometers. We got 103.0 kilometers on the battery. It's not bad. The engine will, at some point, will start. It has not started running yet. If I look at, uh, where is it here? If I look at flow, you'll see that the battery is still being used. The engine has not actually fired. Although I'm at that point where it is, it has transitioned over to gas now. So when it needs the engine, so basically I'm on the reserve of the battery and once it, once the battery gets past its, its reserve, the engine will start and run for a couple minutes to put some charge in the battery and then it'll shut off. And that's how this system operates. So even when it's in gas mode, the engine does not run constantly. It, it cycles on and off. And at this point it has not started. As you can see, my history has been no gas usage at all. It's everything's down at zero. The entire time I've owned the car, I've put uh, about 1,900 kilometers on it. The only time I burned gas was when I was uh, coming to, back from Squamish, and I burned about five liters, which is about a gallon and a half for for those that are uh, thinking in terms of gallons. 3.78 liters to a U.S. gallon, and I burned five liters, so just about a gallon and a half is all I used of fuel to come back from Squamish. But I drove the entire way back on gas because I used up all the battery getting up there. And that was about 50, 56, 58 miles. I think it was close to 60 miles. Maybe 60 miles total on gas. Burned about one and a half gallons. I've, we figured it out at like 41 miles to the gallon.
I see the lights are still out, which means that they probably will not be opening up the counter flow lane today at three o'clock, which means that the tunnel is going to be just an absolute zoo for the rest of the afternoon. Last one and a half kilometers, I've still been on battery, so we've actually got a, had a total of 104.5 because, as you can see, the engine has not started. We have not used any fuel. We've got an extra one and a half kilometers on the reserve. It's going to start. It'll, it'll start. It'll start soon. So this is not accurate because there's been no fuel, but it, it is. It is measuring now that I'm in the gas range, even though the engine is not running. As you can see, the engine's not lighting up here. When it starts. This will light up and you'll see power going into be blue going into the into the motor there but it should start okay i think the engine yeah the engine just started i just i just heard it start not that you really hear it because uh general motors has done a very good job of isolating the motor itself and you, you don't even hear it So now we're on engine power and we're recovering some power back into the battery because I'm slowing down. Now the engine will turn on and off as I continue to drive. You'll watch it. It'll go on and off here as we're, as we're moving along. Even at freeway speeds, it'll shut off. So when I get home, the first thing I gotta do is uh, fix my charger because I'm down to one level two charger. And sharing between two cars, that's a problem. Oh, they fixed some of the lights now. These were all out before. They got one of the green lights working, the other one's still out. Gone back to battery, the engine is shut off. And you go, oh, nice move. You see that jerk? that the colors change here right if we're using if, if, if we're on engine power it's blue to the wheels and into the battery now the battery is not charging now we're getting power from both the battery and the engine so this changes color green is battery orange is a combination and blue is engine power and that's how the second generation volt changes modes and it changes mode seamless, so you don't notice it. The driver doesn't notice it at all as it changes from one power source to another.
course, someone else is going to get in front of me to prevent me from doing that. Someone in a piece of crap Fiat 500 at that. Truck's probably going to beat this car off the line. I said the truck was going to beat the Fiat off the line, and I was right. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you again real soon. Bye for now.